Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Um, today we're going to be continuing our work on character. So on Monday we talked about what characterization was and especially how um, when we characterize somebody it's not just about describing what they look like but really kind of giving them the action and the um, you know having them having them kind of move through their through their actions and in that way their actions can can create who they are rather than just telling the audience who they are. So today we're going to be talking about something about uh, that's called addiction. I'm going to call it purposeful addiction um, and how purposeful addiction reveals character traits. Uh, so we'll be building upon the um, upon the knowledge that we have from Monday and hopefully the practice that you did yesterday. Um, so as always, there are going to be some notes. You should probably pause now and make sure that you're ready for notes and I will see you on the next slide. So we need to start out with what diction is because if I'm going to say that purposeful diction is important to creating characters and it's not just important to creating characters by the way this diction thing is important all over the place but we're going to be talking about it in, co in the context of creating characters we need to first know what diction is. Um, the I personally think it's easiest to remember what diction is by just looking at that word and knowing that diction is the same kind of root word as dictionary. Uh, and what what is a dictionary? Well, it's a book that's full of words. So diction, we can make a fairly safe guess, is something, uh, is something to do with words, right? So here's uh, a definition. That, that diction in somebody's writing is the author's choice of words. So when we talk about diction, we're talking about the choices we make about the words that we're going to be using in our writing. You are the author in this case. You're creating the setting. You're creating this character. You really need to think carefully about the words that, that you're choosing because every word has a specific meaning to it and choosing the right or the wrong word is going to be uh, kind of you know, you know it, it can kind of make or break um, your character or your setting. So the important thing to remember is that diction is always in good writing is always careful and deliberate. Careful meaning you never just pass off a word you know like every single word that that you use has been carefully chosen. That doesn't mean that you have to spend five minutes choosing every word, but that you're aware that if a word is wrong, you need to pick a different one. Um, so deliberate means that that you have actively approved this word that, you know, or that you're aware like, oh, well, this word here isn't, isn't right. I really need to make a better choice about it. Deliberate means that you've deliberated, that you've kind of picked uh, what is best, not just what is good enough. And when we have careful and deliberate diction, it's purposeful diction, right? It's going to reveal extra information through connotation. So um, connotation, remember when, when something has a connotation, it means that there's an underlying meaning, that it's not just the dictionary definition, so much as we understand that there, there are certain meanings that come along with words, even if that meaning isn't in the dictionary. And so when we really carefully and deliberately pick our diction, then we're not just giving a word that portrays certain kind of scientific information, but it also portrays um, uh, feeling and emotion and other kind of ideas beyond that. So with that said, let's talk about the wrong way to pick words, because a lot of people will hear all of this information about diction and they'll say, well, OK, then I'm going to just use my dictionary and I'm going to use my thesaurus and I'm going to be really smart and I'm just going to show this teacher or whoever that I am able to use a dictionary and a thesaurus to, to pick words. It's not just about picking, right? It's about picking the right word. So. We do not pick words by saying, well, it was just the first word that popped into my head. And I'm talking about writing now. Obviously, when we're speaking, that is how we pick words. 
But when we're writing and when we want our writing to be really good, whether it's fiction or whether it's scientific writing or whatever it is, an essay, um, that good writing is not just, well, this is the word that came to mind and it was good enough, right? We also do not, now this is the opposite end. This is where a lot of people make an even bigger mistake. We do not pick the word in the thesaurus that seems the most impressive. Oops, there's a typo there. Um, not impressive, but impressive. So we're not just picking a word because it looks amazing or because it makes me sound really smart. We're picking a word because it's right. So let's look at how diction can be used in characterization then. We start off with this sentence. Fiona went into the kitchen holding her empty bowl with one hand. What we have is, you know, this one sentence about this character, Fiona. You know, she's going into the kitchen. We know that she has a bowl, an empty bowl in her hand. It, but we don't really know anything about Fiona other than she's going into the kitchen with an empty bowl in her hand. Do we know about what she looks like? No. Do we know about what she believes or how she acts? No, nothing like that. And it, a lot of this can come down to the diction that we've used, uh, especially the diction concerning the verbs that we've used. So we have um, went and holding, you know, she went into the kitchen holding her empty bowl with one hand. Okay, fine. But what do we know about Fiona? Nothing. If we just change a couple of words, all of a sudden Fiona becomes a much more um, engaging, interesting person. So in rewrite one, what I give us is Fiona waddled into the kitchen, gripping her empty bowl with one hand. Now just those two words, right? Just two words create a completely different experience of who Fiona is. Fiona's waddling into the kitchen. Why is Fiona waddling? You know, she, there's something wrong with how she walks. She can't walk normally. You know, we have some questions, but but we also know that Fiona has some kind of physical impairment, right? She's gripping the bowl. This isn't something that um, this isn't something that she does easily, right? Like again, we have she has this kind of physical impairment, and so we get this picture of this person who is maybe in pain or is maybe having some other kinds of difficulty, and we want to know hopefully more about her, right? Like. Like she's not a full person yet, but just those two words really help us understand who Fiona is. Now in the other case, we can replace those two words with something completely different and, and Fiona becomes an entirely different person. So Fiona danced into the kitchen, twirling her empty bowl with one, with one hand. Choosing danced and twirled makes Fiona somebody who's not from, from rewrite number one, you know, this person with a physical impairment and possibly in pain and, and struggling, but she's somebody who can move easily, right? She's dancing into the kitchen. She she has these kinds of like kind of lively movements and she's very agile, twirling the empty bowl in one hand. You know, she you know, she feels good, she feels happy, she seems to be enjoying herself. Two very different Fionas simply by changing two different words, right? And so you know, that first sentence tells us nothing. Fiona's just a cardboard static character that we don't really care about. The second one creates this whole like wondering about who is this poor Fiona person. Well, the third one is we have a whole different set of questions and expectations from this person. So diction is very important to how we, dis um, how we are able to create um, characters that are believable and um, interesting for the audience. So let's look at a professional example now. This is from Of Mice and Men, and this is from when we first meet Lenny, of, Lenny and George. It says, the first man stopped short in the clearing and the, and the follower nearly ran over him. He took off his hat and wiped the sweatband with his forefinger and snapped the moisture off. His huge companion dropped his blankets and flung himself down and drank from the surface of the, of the green um, and drank from the surface of the green pool, I have a typo there, drank with long gulps, snorting into the water like a horse, that small man stepped nervously beside him. Now, we get these two characters, but I've highlighted some of the, of the diction here. Stop short, ran over, 
white, snapped, dropped, flung, drank, snorting, stepped nervously. And so depending on which character each of those diction choices are, compare, are, are attached to, we're getting a real sense of who, this, who these characters are. So with the smaller man, who we, of course, because we've read the book, know as George, with, with, the, with the diction that's been chosen to describe him, stopped short, white, and snapped, um, you know, we know that he's deliberate, you know, like he, he is very like certain about his actions, that he's quick and that he's thoughtful, that he, you know, he, he thinks about what he's doing and then he does it with, with very, very much with, with certainty. Whereas with the larger man, who we of course know as Lenny, who is described as ran, you know, ran over him, his actions are ran out, he's snorting water, he's, you know, um, he's dropping and he's flinging and he's drinking, right? He, the larger man is not cautious, that he's kind of slow in a way, not, not that he's necessarily, you know, moving slowly, but, but we get this sense that, you know, maybe his mind is a bit slow, right? Like the way that he's snorting and dropping and running things over and flinging himself and that he's sloppy, that he's not as deliberate or careful as the smaller man is. So even these very kind of what seem like unimportant words on the surface, the connotations of those words really tell us a lot about who Lenny and George are uh, before we ever even know their names and what we can expect from them. And yes, it sets up uh, maybe more questions than that will need to be answered later, later in the story, but this diction is really important to establishing who those characters are. And so you really have to start immediately um, with your with your writing, being careful about the, the words that you're choosing so that those words really get across the ideas about your characters that you want. So for tomorrow, I want you to consider how focusing on the diction of your verbs, so we're gonna go back to the verbs, and I want you, I, how can the verbs, so especially those actions, you know, how do you pick verbs from Tuesday's writings that reveal more about your character, that tell us the things about your character's beliefs and actions and physical appearances and personal relationship that are really going to help us understand who they are and make them an even more real person to us as we move forward. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with, uh, and I'll see you back here later.